Hi, everyone. My name is Vince Leo. I am the film critic for the website Quipster.net. I've been doing film reviews for about 20 years now, and I invite you to check out all of my written work there at that website, Quipster.net. Q-W-I-P-S-T-E-R.net is where to go. I also invite you to write to me. You can find my contact information there, as well as links to my Twitter feed and my Facebook page as well. Quipster.net. Today I'm going to be looking at the latest Melissa McCarthy film. It's called The Boss. It's a comedy, as of course it is. And it's an R-rated film because of sexual content, language, and brief drug use. The runtime is an hour and 39 minutes. In addition to Melissa McCarthy, it stars Kristen Bell, Peter Dinklage, Ella Anderson, Tyler Labine, Annie Momolo, Kathy Bates, Cecily Strong, and Kristen Shaw. The director is Melissa McCarthy's husband, Ben Falcone. Falcone also contributes to the screenplay along with McCarthy, as well as Steve Mallory. Although Ben Falcone is married to Melissa McCarthy, and he clearly knows the kind of talent that he has at his disposal more than anyone, I think that he also might be the least effective at channeling the enormous appeal of his partner in crime into something that will also appeal to an audience beyond just her hardcore fans. Maybe it's because he's the least likely of McCarthy's directors to tell her no, being her husband, especially since McCarthy is also a screenwriter, the main star, and the executive producer of the film. You know, both in this film and in Falcone's debut directorial effort, Tammy, the formula seems to be to give McCarthy a bull of a character and this china shop of a world for her to inhabit and run havoc with. Just let her run completely loose and let her do her thing and score up big laughs through improvisation. Now that might be funny for a spell as a skit in the improv group called The Groundlings from which McCarthy originated this character in her time there, or maybe it would be effective for a scene or two if McCarthy were the supporting player in another kind of comedy film. I do think that ultimately the director has to know when to contain his star's indulgences and give us in the audience, even those who are big fans of McCarthy, some sort of plot that's worth following and characters that are worth caring about. All we really get are scene after scene of these kinds of alley-oops of comedy for McCarthy to try to take to the hole repeatedly time and again. Continuing this basketball metaphor, what Falcone and McCarthy fail to realize is that audiences are excited and are entertained to see the occasional slam dunk within the course of a real basketball game, but watching a game in which there were nothing but slam dunks would grow exceedingly tiresome, and that's precisely why their films don't really work as full-length features. They're really more a collection of skits that are put together, and they're more like sideshow attractions for fans. And that's why a lot of people who aren't Melissa McCarthy fans are probably going to skip this altogether. So, as far as the plot goes, in this film, McCarthy plays a woman named Michelle Darnell. As a child, she was unwanted and lived in an orphanage. She eventually learned to channel her despondent feelings and made something of herself As an adult, she eventually emerged as a wildly successful financial tycoon. She becomes the 47th wealthiest woman in the country, according to her. She is working as a go-to guru. She spreads her secret of success in the form of these kinds of arena-filling seminars with all of the sparkling spectacle of a heavy metal concert. It doesn't really last, unfortunately. She's soon in prison for a few months because of insider training. The SEC gets a tip from her unscrupulous rival and her former lover named Renault, a.k.a. Ronald, played by Peter Dinklage. Michelle Darnell finds herself back outside. She's penniless. She doesn't have many allies. And she only has her former assistant, Claire, to rely on to help her to get back on her feet. After she's living with Claire for a while... Michelle goes back to her cutthroat entrepreneurial ways. She makes this connection between Claire's yummy homemade brownies and Claire's daughter Rachel's box of cookies that she's selling for a Girl Scout-like nonprofit organization known as the Dandelions. They reap millions of dollars in sales year after year, and that puts the light bulb above Michelle's head of an opportunity for creating a for-profit troupe of her own known as Darnell's Darlings. Her next business venture is now set. She's going to be raking in millions, she thinks, although the tactics that it takes to be the top dog doesn't really sit well with all of these kind-hearted people who are helping her and whose feelings she repeatedly tramples on without remorse.
So one of the least effective modes of comedy in The Boss is this idea that being deliberately mean automatically equates to being funny. The Boss is a film that's full of abusive jabs these characters take at one another, both figuratively and literally, and there are occasionally funny lines. There's some funny, silly, slapstick moments that are stumbled into here and there. I won't say it's devoid of entertainment, but... Somehow, there's this corrosive element to the kind of mean-spiritedness of the tone of the boss that eventually starts to weigh it down. You know, one example of going too far comes in a scene that you can see in the trailer and a lot of the advertisements for this film. It's a scene in which there's a street brawl that erupts between Darnell's Darlings and the rival Dandelion Girl Scout troop. While the thought of a collection of sweet and innocent Girl Scouts becoming a street gang might be an amusing notion in some sort of all-out absurdist farce like one of the early scenes in Airplane. What's not really funny is to actually see characters we're supposed to care about punching and kicking and doing physical harm toward one another, especially since they're children. And even worse, when the adults start getting involved in the brawl and they start to punch young girls in the face too. So I think that what can be a funny idea ends up playing too long and too brutal. And I think that unfortunately the balance is a bit off and that happens time and again through the course of this movie. There's just a little something too mean in the comedy that's developed here to make for more than uncomfortable kind of laugh. Sometimes I will say that the audience of my screening in the times that they laughed, they laughed more at what I would consider to be some fairly cheap physical gags that aren't really part of the plot. They involve McCarthy doing such things as she lays down on a fold-out sofa, which somehow is improbably spring-loaded, and McCarthy ends up getting flipped into the wall and hurting herself there. Another moment later in the film, Melissa McCarthy goes to a trendy Japanese restaurant, and she ends up ordering and eating fugu, which is the Japanese word for pufferfish, which has some sort of toxins, which may be poisonous and maybe even paralyze people if it's not cooked completely right. And so, you know, we see her getting a little bit paralyzed in the face or falling over because of her experience eating this, and that gets a laugh. There's another scene late in the film in which she falls down a flight of stairs, a scene you've seen many times over the years from a variety of different slapstick comedians. Those kinds of surprise moments did elicit laughs in my theater, but the barbed insults that the characters ended up lobbing at one another seemed to kind of fall flat, and I didn't find them funny either. Now, despite it all, I will say that there is about a handful of solid chuckles that I had and probably will be had by many. There's a few other dozen that elicit smirks. But despite those moments, there are whole segments of the boss that are not funny at all. For instance, there's a recurring gag that involves Claire's lovelorn office mate named Mike, played by Tyler Labine. He's trying, mostly in vain, to get a date out of Claire. She's a single mom, and she doesn't really know she should be back in the dating pool. And Labine plays him as a lovable loser, but while he is kind of a comedic talent, I don't think that Labine here is served very well because he barely brings more mirth to the film than Kristen Bell, who is playing deliberately comically bland, and that leaves the main star, McCarthy, and an ultra hammy and very unfunny turn by Peter Dinklage to try to drum up laughs for the film's all-too-violent-for-comedy's sake, anyway, finale that cranks up the volume and the violence up to 10. And there's a talented supporting cast that also chips in here, but... They mostly fill what I would consider to be throwaway parts. We get Cecily Strong as Claire's own horrible boss. Margot Martindale is in the opening of the film in this kind of wasted cameo where she only has a couple of lines. Kathy Bates barely registers at all as Darnell's mentor. The whole film feels like there may have been a lot that was left on the cutting room floor with some of these bigger name stars. And yet... It makes you wonder just how unfunny those scenes are if what makes the final cut is also unfunny because this film already feels like it's about 15 or 20 minutes of good material that's stretched out over the course of an hour and 40 minute movie. 
the best and maybe even the only selling point for the boss is its star, Melissa McCarthy. So the only appeal of this film is going to be strictly limited to her hardcore fans. There's just not enough time or energy that's given to anything like the story, the plot, which is kind of an afterthought. The supporting cast is merely here for her to play off of. So she's the main interest, not really any of these other actors. So because of all of this, I think that your mileage is going to vary depending on how funny you find Melissa McCarthy's impudent, profanity-laden shtick. You know, Melissa McCarthy will make the film pretty easy to watch if you're a fan, But I do think that it's a shame that the material that she gives herself is so easy to forget in the end. You know, in the world of business, the boss is always right. But in the world of movies, there's too much wrong with the boss to garner any kind of respect from us. While I do think that it's passable as entertainment, if you were to watch it at home, maybe on Netflix or whatever, because it feels like a collection of skit comedy premises... If you took it in small chunks, perhaps you'd be entertained. But as a film, to go out and take your family to and shell out your hard-earned money for, I really can't recommend it, even though I do like Melissa McCarthy. So I'm going to give it two and a half stars out of four on my scale. And two and a half stars means that it's a film I can't quite recommend, even though it had the tools, it had the talent to be a winning film. It just falls short. It's not that it doesn't have enough laughs, because I do think it has a few laughs here and there, enough to make it watchable. It doesn't really have a really good story or a good plot. And whenever it deals with them, it feels begrudgingly so. And those parts are DOA. I think she's better served in other films where she's allowed to be somewhat contained within a movie that's otherwise interesting to follow despite her. I think when left to her own devices, she can be funny. But at a certain point, it's just more of the same gags over and over and over again. And it runs out of flavor very quickly. So two and a half stars out of four is all I could give the boss. Thanks everyone for listening. I hope that you enjoyed the review. If you did, I do encourage you to click the subscribe button and you'll continue to get all of my reviews downloaded into your podcast player on a mostly daily basis. Also, if you happen to be a long time listener and you want to support the show, my encouragement is for you to go to iTunes and leave a review and let other people know what you think of the show. The Quipster Film Review Podcast is the name. That's the best way that you can show your support, and it helps me out a great deal. So until next time, thanks everyone for listening, and I hope that you enjoy your time anytime you get to go to the movies. 